Assalamu alaikum. In this presentation, we'll discuss some of the distinguishing features of the more common non-absorbable type of sutures. In general, sutures that retain uh, most of their tensile strength after two months are categorized uh, for practical reasons as non-absorbable sutures. Uh, some of these non-absorbable sutures are actually very slowly absorbable sutures. Uh, like silk and nylon, because although they retain most of their tensile strength after two months, they very slowly um, undergo some degradation, and silk, for example, would lose 50% of its tensile strength in a year, and almost all of its tensile strength in two, uh, while nylon would lose four, a fourth of its tensile strength within two years. So they are actually very slowly absorbable in contrast to the other and non-absorbable synthetic sutures. The truly non-absorbable sutures like proline, polyester, and steel are fairly inert. They don't induce uh, an inflammatory reaction once embedded inside tissues. And because there is no inflammatory reaction, they are not uh, digested by the body and they are not uh, hydrolyzed by contact with uh, body fluids or, uh, or water either. So they actually just remain there. What the body does to them is to um, wall them off by encapsulating the foreign body, the inert foreign body material by a thin scar tissue. If the sutures are to the skin, lies outside the body, it should be removed. Otherwise, it would remain embedded within its very thin uh, scar tissue. The earliest forms of non-absorbable sutures were produced from natural material like silk. Silk is produced from a silkworm. It gives up a protein that can be spun into fibers. And these fibers are very slowly uh, degraded inside the tissues and gets absorbed in about two years or so. It's used, uh, still in use, silk sutures because of its superior handling properties. It can be used to ligate larger blood vessels and can also help in the, in the suturing of uh, several uh, soft tissues. Steel is another natural, uh, pro uh, natural um, product that can be used to um, produce non-absorbable sutures uh, in an alloy, of course. Um, it's used when healing process is so slow that it uh, requires long-term support like tendons and um, craniofacial and cranioplasty uh, procedures. Um, it can also be used in the skin like in uh, staples. The reason why silk, which is a natural non-absorbable material, is still in use, although it produces an intense inflammatory reaction, is its superior handling properties very much favored by surgeons. It is either twisted or braided into multi-filament type of suture that regains at least 50% of its tensile strength for a year, and it gets ultimately absorbed uh, the, in about two years or so. And eventually, synthetic non-absorbable sutures were produced. They are um, virtually inert, they have superior tensile strength, they can be shaped into monofilaments, which glides very easily through the tissues, and can sometimes be braided into multifilament type of tissues. Uh, the commonest three type of the synthetic non-absorbable sutures are the nylon, the proline, and the polyester, and we'll go through them uh, one by one. The top advantage of the nylon suture is its superior uh, tensile strength. They have so high tensile strength that they can be thinned out into very, very thin filaments like 9O and 10O type of uh, monofilament type sutures. These uh, very thin sutures need to be dyed by intensified black dye in order to be uh, clearly visible within the wound. Um, beside its very high tensile strength, 
um, nylon sutures are virtually inert. They have very low tissue reactivity. Um, they can, they are produced in either the monofilament type of suture, like the ethylene, or they can be uh, braided into uh, multifilament, as we'll see uh, next. They also uh, don't get wetted with fluids, body fluids, and don't transmit uh, infection along their surface. And because they are monofilament, um, the filament tends to regain uh, memory with tendency to spring back to its uh, natural uh, shape and position. Uh, that's why more throws are required to be placed in the nylon uh, knots. They are very good for ophthalmology and microsurgery procedures. When the nylon sutures are braided into a multi-filament type of sutures, um, they can be handled quite well, much like handling sil silk sutures. So they have more uh, knot uh, strength and uh, ties uh, more easily. They all remain uh, with very high tensile strength and uh, fairly low tissue reactivity. Um, much better than silk, which induces an intense uh, reaction. Uh, nylon sutures would degrade slowly, like losing about 15 to 20 percent of their tensile strength per year. So they will probably stay for about five or six years with enough tensile strength. Uh, but they are not uh, advised uh, for use in uh, securing things like prosthesis is something that requires long-term support within the body. What makes um, the proline suture one of the favorites for uh, procedures in general surgery, in cosmetic surgery, vascular, cardiac, plastic, or orthopedic surgery, is that they, this type of sutures don't adhere to the tissues. So if you're doing a subdermal uh, type of suture, um, you can pull out the proline suture without much friction with the uh, holding tissues. Proline is also inert, so it doesn't produce much of a reaction in the surrounding tissue. And it has high tensile strength. It is produced in a monofilament type uh, with a very smooth surface, so it drags very easily uh, within the tissues, and it is reliable. When you need minimal reaction, uh, like in vascular surgery or cardiac surgery or cosmetic surgery, or when the wound is contaminated or infected, proline is one of the best choices. Both nylon and proline are very good choices for closing the skin, uh, particularly in exposed uh, areas like the face. Uh, nylon sutures are more pliable, um, so it's more easy to handle, and they, they knot uh, very well. So if you are doing interrupted sutures, like interrupted percutaneous sutures, uh, maybe nylon would give you some advantages. But if you are doing a continuous suture, uh, particularly if it is a subdermal type of suture that need to be pulled out, then the lower drag force of proline uh, is of particular um, advantage here, and this may be your uh, favorite choice. Polyester sutures are available in their braided uh, and coated forms. Uh, they offer a very high tensile strength, both to the suture material and the knot. So when this is of paramount importance, like securing prostheses and things, then polyester sutures are the one to be favored, particularly if there is some stress conditions, like um, if there is too much weight on the suture line. They also, because they are coated, they pass very smoothly, glide smoothly through the tissues, but they knot very well. Their knotting properties are, are very well because they are uh, they are multi-filament type of uh, sutures. Um, so they are in general used for soft tissue approximation um, and they are used in cardiovascular, ophthalmic and neurological procedures. 
And finally, the uh, suture materials are uh, provided in color-coded packages. Uh, so plain gut, for example, would be color-coded by yellow, um, chromic gut brown, silk like light blue, nylon sutures are green, proline is royal blue, and uh, vicryl would be purple, ethibond would be orange, uh, PDS would be gray, and stainless steel sutures would be silver. By this, we come to the end of the uh, three short presentations on surgical sutures. We now move to uh, surgical knots. Assalamu alaikum.